Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to be going through question number well, it's number six from the Solomon J collection of C3, which corresponds to question 15 from my end of topic worksheet number four, which is about trig addition formulae from P3. <clears throat> this question here is um, part A is about proving the identity given. So you've got to prove that. 2 cot 2x plus 10x is equal to cot x. So you've got to start with what's on the left-hand side here and show that when you manipulate this algebraically using trig identities, you'll end up with cot x. Okay, so we can see here that we've got to start with something which is um, a double angle or partly double angle and end up with something which is just a single angle, cot x. So what we've got to do fo focus on first is this cot 2x and try to change it into something um, which has single angles. Now we are we're given some formulae in the formula book. They're not double angle formulae. However, what they are are basically. Um, let me just do this. They are the compound angle formulae, which are I've, I've got a copy of them over here. Okay, so you got sine a plus b, cosine a plus b, tan a plus b. All right, now. What I think would be easiest here, I'm sure you could do this in a couple of ways, but the easiest thing to do here, I think, is to use the, the trig identities for tan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take tan A plus B equals tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A times tan B, but I'm going to call it tan X plus X instead, which is the same as tan of 2X. And I know that cot of 2X is the reciprocal of tan of 2X. So the tan of 2X is going to therefore be if I follow this formula, tan x plus another tan x, because now our a and b are both x, over 1 minus, when it's plus here there's a minus, minus tan x times tan x, which is tan squared x. So you end up with 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x. So I can use the identity that the tan of 2x is basically 2 times tan x over 1 minus tan squared x. Now, if you you should memorize this. This is not given in the formula book. Okay, this should be something that you should know, you should memorize. But if you do forget it, you can do exactly what I did here. Go to the formula book, go to tan a plus b, change it to tan x plus x, and you'll get the expression you need for tan 2x. And the same for cosine 2x. Cosine 2x, you can do the same thing. All right, so I'm going to use this formula. Now, I know cot 2x is the reciprocal of tan 2x. So if tan 2x is, is ta 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x, that means cot 2x is going to be the reciprocal of this. So cot 2x would be 1 minus tan squared x over 2 tan x. So what I'm going to do is I'll replace the cot x with cot 2x, which is the reciprocal of tan 2x. So it's 1 minus tan squared x over 2 tan x. And I've got plus tan x, and I have to show... When I simplify this, I get cot x. So the 2 cancels with this 2. So you're left with 1 minus the tan squared of x divided by tan x plus tan x. Now I've got two terms becoming one term. So I'm going to add these two fractions together. Okay, if I add these two fractions together, um, I'll make the denominators the same. So I'll make them both expressed as something under tan x. So this is going to stay as it is. 1 minus tan squared x plus, and this will be, if I make this tan x, I have to multiply the numerator by tan x, I get tan squared x. Now I can write this as one denominator, which is tan squared x, and I have 1 minus tan squared x plus tan squared x, and then we can see, uh, so this is not tan squared x, sorry. This is tan x. The common denominator is tan x. Okay, and then I'll end up with here 1 minus tan squared x plus tan squared x gives you 0. So you've got 1 over tan x. And we know that 1 over tan x is the same as cot x. So we have shown by this manipulation and by this um, using the double angle formula that this expression gives us cot x. Now I'm sure if we change this into 2 cosine 2x over sine 2x, plus sine x over cosine x, and then use the double angle formulae for cosine and, and sine, we would get to the same answer. But I think this is a, bot, a lot easier to use this. So we've proved this identity. And that's part A done. Now for part B. 
Part B says solve for x between 0 and pi, the equation. 2 cot 2x plus 10x is equal to cos x squared x minus 7. Now, whenever you see part B of a question, always think to yourself, most likely it's going to have some relation to part A. And if you look at part A and compare what we had to show in part A, they're identical. Cot 2x plus 10x is equal to cot x. So what I can do here is I can use my answer from part A and replace this with cot x, and that's going to make my life a whole lot easier. So I'm going to say cot x is equal to cosec squared x minus 7. Now I want to solve this equation. Now I can solve this equation um, by making all of the um, trig ratios into the same ratio. So I can see I've got cot x and cos x squared x. I want to relate them two together. So what I'm going to do is, if you don't know the identity, you always start with sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. We want to have something that has, involves cot and cosec. So, of course, if I divide by sine, sine squared x, this will give me the identity that I need. This is going to be 1 plus cot squared x equals cosec squared x. So if I replace the cosec squared x with 1 plus cot squared x, I'll have an equation with all the same trig ratio. It's always you know, the case where the one that's squared changes into one that's not squared. So I'm not going to try and change cot x into cos x squared x, because then I have to use square root. But cos x squared x, I can change into 1 plus cot squared x, and that's going to make life easier. So I'm going to have cot x equals 1 plus cot squared x minus 7. And now I can, um, you know, rearrange this to make a quadratic equation involving cot squared x. So if I just subtract cot, cot x from both sides, I have cot squared x minus cot x. Minus, 1 minus 7 is negative. Minus 6 is equal to 0. I can say let cot x equals a letter, for example. I can call it the letter b if I want. So this gives me b squared minus b minus b minus 6 is equal to 0. I can find by factorizing, and it looks like this does factorize, I'll have b 1 plus 1 minus, the multiply to give you negative 6. You're going to have a minus 3 and plus 2. That gives you minus 1 when you add them and minus 6 when you multiply them. That's right. So then I can say b is equal to negative 2 and b is equal to 3. So therefore, I can say that cot x, cot x is equal to negative 2, and cot x is equal to 3. So now I can say that that means tan x, which is the reciprocal of cot x, is minus a half. And I can say tan x is equal to the reciprocal of 3, which is a third. So now I can use my calculator, and I can find the inverse tan of negative a half, and the inverse tan of one third. Let's see what we get when we do that. Okay, so let's do that now. So I'm gonna inverse tan. I'm in radian mode, yes, because we've got a, I think it's in terms of pi. In radians, to do that, that's right, pi there. So inverse tan of negative a half. Okay, that gives me um, x equals 0 0.46364. It's negative. Okay, so x equals negative 0 0.46, what was it? 3647, 364 goes on like that. Okay, now that answer is not in our range because our range is between 0 and pi, 3.14. But we can use this to find angles in our range with the tan curve. It's very easy. You just keep adding 180, or in this case, pi, to the answer until you're in the range. So we're going to add to this answer pi. And that gives us 2.66, sorry, 2.67794. 2.7794. Sorry, 2.67794. Okay, so to two decimal places, that's 2.68. So that's the answer for this section. Now, any other answers are out of the range because it's only up to a pi. So if I add another pi to this, I'll be outside of the range. 
And here we have x equals, now we're going to do inverse tan of negative, of one third, sorry. So I'll do inverse tan, inverse tan of negative, of positive one third. Inverse tan of one over three, and that should give us our answer, which should be in the range 0 0.32175. 0 0.32175 just make sure of that 32175 that's right goes on so therefore x is equal to to two decimal places 0 0.32 if i add pi or take away pi i'll be outside of my range so these are the two answers x equals 2.68 and x equals 0 0.32 simply just using this identity to rewrite everything with the same ratio and solving the question okay so it's um, not, that, not that much of a hassle. It's a pretty easy question. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions you might want to watch from Solomon J, P3 or C3 collection can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this endotopic worksheet can be found in the playlist in this section over here. You can subscribe to my channel. You can watch other stuff to do with this topic of uh, trig identities and trig equations from P3 in the playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon